By 2018, 17 global financial conglomerates collectively managed $15.1 trillion, more than half the GDP of the entire planet. The richest 1%, led by 36 million millionaires and 2,400 billionaires, controlled more than half of the world's wealth, while the bottom 80% was left to survive on 4.5% of the global wealth. The steady marginalization of most of the world's populations, tossed aside by corporate capitalism as disposable, has created a permanent underclass with no real prospect of advancement. As inequality mounts, our corporate rulers are creating ever more sophisticated tools of repression, including wholesale surveillance, the world's largest prison system in the United States, the persecution of immigrants and refugees, a rigged judicial system, crippling debt peonage, and militarized police to exert iron control over those global capitalists consider disposable. Joining me to discuss the new global dystopia is William Robinson, professor of sociology, global studies, and Latin American studies at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and the author of The Global Police State. So at the beginning of the book, um, you talk, uh, you list three uh, kind of elements to the rise of this global police state, which I want you to speak about. Uh, uh, you talk about the omnipresent systems of mass social control, repression, and warfare promoted by the ruling groups to contain the real and potential rebellion of the global working class and surplus humanity. Can you lay that out for us? Sure. Yeah, well, the starting point for talking about global police state is the crisis of global capitalism. Now, I wrote this book before the pandemic, but the point here is that cap global capitalism was already facing an acute crisis. The pandemic only made it worse. The crisis is multidimensional. We know it's ecological. Uh, it's a social crisis of survival for some 3.5 to 4 billion people. But specifically, in order to put it place in context, these three dimensions of global police state, we want to look at two dimensions of the crisis, which is structural, chronic, chronic stagnation in the global economy. And secondly, a political crisis of state legitimacy and of capitalist hegemony. And capitalist states around the world have been unable to cope with this crisis even before the pandemic. And the pandemic has exposed these states as instruments of wealth and corruption and are pushing these states to intensify global police state. For me, this concept of global police state is critical to understanding where we're at in 2020 uh, and the nature of global capitalism. And those three dimensions you were asking me about is, first of all, we're seeing the extension and the deepening of transnational systems of repression, social control, and warfare to contain surplus humanity and the global working class, which is experiencing complete immiseration and destabilization. The second dimension is in the face of chronic stagnation in the global economy, what more technically we call overaccumulation, um, we the global police state pushes forward what I term in the book militarized accumulation and accumulation by repression, which is to say that global police state is immensely profitable. And at a time when there are not other outlets for, for, for capitalists to continue to make profits. And the third dimension of global police state is that we're moving towards political systems that can be called 21st century fascism. Now, these three dimensions in, uh, in and of themselves are not necessarily novel, but they can't be separated from one another. And we need to see how the three are intertwined in new ways in the context of global police state that signal this extremely uh, dangerous phase in global capitalism with its, with its severe crisis as the backdrop as the world descends into this repressive totality.